How's it going everybody? My name is Josh Nass for Fieldcraft Survival. You may know me from the Ham Radio Crash Course and today I want to talk about uh, survival communications or communications you might use when in the field and protecting one of the most important assets of that communication which is your battery source. So here's a, a simple two-way amateur radio. This could be a Baofeng or you know any cheaper radio or more expensive. When you're on the field you don't want to run the battery all the time. You don't want to leave the radio on because we don't know for how long you might be out there. Also, you just, you know, save the resource that you have. So what we use is something called the wilderness protocol. The wilderness protocol is a comms window with pre-identifying frequencies. We're going to talk about one frequency for two meter amateur radio, a part of the very high frequency or VHF frequency space. It's 146.520 megahertz and is part of the national calling frequencies set. When you are in the field at predetermined times starting at 7 a.m., every three hours you will turn your radio on and listen for roughly five minutes. I happen to have a handy little card here that I use whenever I have a radio that I take in the field or I have people that are going with me in the field. I'll take this and just rubber band it, or I like hair ties, elastic hair ties work pretty well, rubber band this to the radio and let them know what channel the radio should be on, uh, how to get it into channel or frequency mode, and then tell them what frequency it is we're going to be using. Again, 146.520 is really important here. And then it has the time plan or the comm plan on when they should check in and for how long they should monitor. If you're amateur radio licensed, what I recommend you do is when you have your radio on, on those pre-approved windows, you give your call sign and you say something along the lines of monitoring for wilderness protocol traffic or emergency traffic. And then you may very well find yourself in a situation where somebody calls for help, they can't reach a repeater or another ham, and you might be able to do that. Now, if you're not licensed, you still should follow the wilderness protocol and listen on those pre-approved times uh, because in an emergency you can always then use the radio to help save a life or prevent you know bo great bodily harm. If you're not licensed and you're interested in getting your amateur radio license, on my channel, The Ham Radio Crash Course, we just finished a video series on test prep for the first level of the license, which is technician. And that will run you through all the different questions for the right answers and give you some context. But if you're out in the field, the best thing to do is make sure you use your radio at the specified times, right, so you're not burning your battery down. And then when you're in your car, have a solution if you're so inclined for something portable, like a simple mag mount with a BNC connector that allows me to take the antenna off of this, slap it onto the top of this guy on the roof of the car, and then use the coax to connect to the radio. That's a real simple and inexpensive way to get communications in one platform without having to dive into hundreds of dollars for a mobile radio plus a handheld. And we'll give you a kind of a taste of what radio has to offer without taking the full plunge into, you know, multiple hundred dollars of, of different radios and whatnot. This will work, same concept, will work with GMRS, FRS, as far as being able to have a on the roof solution for your vehicle and the wilderness protocol as well, but you'll have to look at the different channels that would be available for a GMRS radio or FRS radio. So let's assume you're on a multi-day hike or maybe just a day hike, maybe something happens, you might be out there longer than you think. Some of these batteries don't last very long, particularly if you leave the radio on or accidentally um, have left it on in your pack or something along those lines. There's another recommendation I have that is these wires that allow you to take USB power from like a power bank, simple USB power bank, like this 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, and have a up converter, as they call it, which is here in this little box, that will step this voltage up to 12 volts. It'll take, you know, roughly 4.5 to 5 volts of power and get it into not just DC 12 volt, but also the right connector for your radio. These exist uh, on the market for Baofangs. In this case, this is a Yesu radio. All I need to do to be able to get into that is plug into the side here 
and then plug it into my power bank after turning it on. The advantage of using power banks is, you know, they're, they're cheap, they're plentiful, they're all over the place, and they're really easy to charge off of a computer, off of an AC wall wart, and they're pretty small. So you could, instead of having multiple batteries for your handheld, pick up a solution like this with the DC power option. That way you can always charge this, you know, wherever you're at in any situation off of the USB power, which is a little bit easier standard than having a DC solution in some cases. On my little card here, not only do I have the wilderness protocol for the frequencies to monitor both VHF and UHF for the wilderness protocol, and the times to check out. But on the back side, I have a little bit more specific information for this radio. And I have one of these for Baofengs, basically any of the HTs that I carry or have multiples of that I may hand somebody. Most of these radios have what you call a VFO. VFO is an acronym for variable frequency oscillator, which is just a fancy way of saying a frequency dial or channel dial. There's memory channels that you can turn on, memory mode as we call it, and I usually have these radios pre-programmed with local frequencies that are used for what we call simplex communication, which is radio to radio, so uh, camp frequency, uh, in the field hiking frequency, for instance, or local repeaters. Repeaters are big radio stations that are usually on top of mountains that provide a a good footprint of communication, but I put those memory channels on here to let people know memory channel two or three or four is the right channel to be on if you want to have local communication. And it's usually a bit of a comms plan where I remind people that I'm going to start out on local repeater one and then two and then three and work through a bit of a comms plan as communication might not be able to be established. These cards are just, you know, printer paper and a piece of lamination that I got off Amazon that live with this radio just in case somebody, if I'm injured in an emergency situation, somebody could pick this up and call for help. All right, so those are just some tips, my recommendations. There is a lot more information that we're going to be putting out with Fieldcraft. And then if you want to go over to my channel to help you get licensed, I would highly recommend that. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ for Fieldcraft Survival. Thanks for watching.